What is new 5GC, N-E-U 5GC? It's in red meat, it's in pork, and it's talked about a lot as something that's really messing us up and could really be the link between meat and cardiovascular disease. Let's break it down, the science is intriguing. Okay, so new 5GC is something that is produced by mammals, okay? It's in pork, it's in cows, it's in a lot of different mammals that we consume, okay? The interesting thing is, is that we as humans used to have new 5GC, we had it, right? But then somewhere along the line, we ended up having a mutation that occurred that allowed us to basically stop containing it, stop having it, stop producing it. And it's all had to do with different enzymatic reactions. This was like two, three million years ago. Now the really interesting thing is, it was probably a positive evolution because when you look at studies with like mice for instance, when they eliminate you know, new 5GC, they eliminate that whole enzyme conversion process, they got 12% faster and 20% more distance on their runs. Okay, so their performance improved, which tells us that maybe it was just an inefficiency that we didn't need, an extra conversion process that just was unnecessary. But what's interesting now is, okay, mammals that we consume still have this new 5GC. And it's being questioned as to like, hey, when we consume animals that have this new 5GC, do our bodies reject it? Well, the evidence is a little bit inconclusive, but I think I have a pretty good grasp on what's going on here. Hey, after this video, by the way, check out Thrive Market. They are a big supporter and sponsor of this channel, and they are an online membership-based grocery store. So I highly recommend you check them out if you're just looking for something a little bit easier than having to go to the grocery store all the time, and just a way to be able to get groceries delivered to your doorstep. But the best part is, no matter what you're doing, whether you're plant-based, whether you're keto, whether you're paleo, you can sort by diet and pick up exactly what you want based on that. So if you're kind of learning, hey, what food what foods would be good for keto? What foods would be good for vegan? Whatever, makes it that simple and then you just get it delivered to your doorstep and it's that easy. So use that link down below and you can get a special free gift when you sign up for Thrive Market using that link down below in the description. So it's in question that when we consume this, our bodies are going to treat it as a foreign invader. Now what that means is, okay, this is something that's been out of our bodies for so long that our bodies are going to say, this is a foreign pathogen, we need to upregulate inflammatory responses, we need to upregulate interleukins, we need to do all this different stuff to deal with it, which could of course cause a cascade of cardiovascular issues, whatever, you name it, inflammation is not good. Now I see that correlation and that definitely makes sense and there's peer reviewed research to look at that, but there's some other things we have to consider. There's something called hormesis or a hormetic stressor, like a hormetic curve. And what that indicates is that you can stress your body to a certain point and you actually get a positive adaptation. But then once you get to a certain point, that hormetic curve curves and you start getting a diminishing return and eventually it becomes detrimental. Let me give you a simple example. Exercise. You exercise a little bit, you get stronger. You exercise a little bit more, you get a little bit stronger. Exercise a tad too much, eh, diminishing return. You're wasting your time. A little bit more, eh, it's starting to damage you. Too much, you really mess yourself up, right? It's a hormetic curve. Believe it or not, this happens in our nutrition too. It happens in our diet. So when we expose ourselves to new foods, our body has to adapt and it's a hormetic stressor. I'm gonna give an example. If you took someone that was doing like a ketogenic diet and you had them go plant-based, they would tell you that they feel like garbage going plant-based because probably not giving it enough time. And I'm not picking sides one way or the other. Same thing goes for plant-based that was to maybe try carnivore, right? Point is, is that it's going to take time for the stressor to really initiate that entire adaptation and for that adaptation to come to fruition. Well, the same kind of thing does happen to a certain degree even with toxins. So look at things like alcohol. Alcohol, a little bit builds some resiliency. A lot really messes us up. Now alcohol is a different situation because alcohol is getting into our system, okay? It's getting into our bloodstream. This new 5GC, believe it or not, doesn't really get into our system. That's where the real controversy comes into play. New 5GC has to be attached to a molecule in order to get into the system, which happens quite frequently. But the evidence, as clearly demonstrated in a study by Nature Microbiology, shows that if you have the right gut bacteria and your gut is stable, well, then you break down the new 5GC and cleave it off of any molecule it's attached to and you excrete it before it ever poses an issue. Okay, we consume a lot of things. 
sodium benzoates, potassium sorbate, all these things that we consume on a daily basis, whether they're plant-based foods or not, right? Like they're just, they're everywhere. So even the best vegan food is going to have some preservatives that probably aren't designed for us to be exposed to at a plasma level, but our gut can kind of deal with it. Does it mean you should do it? No, but my point is that when you look at the studies, you see that a little bit of exposure to this new 5GC actually allows us to develop the enzyme potential to break it down and deal with it. Okay, so we actually need a little bit of exposure so that we can deal with it so that it doesn't just remain intact with the molecules that it was attached to absorbing into our bloodstream. This has been confirmed with enzymes too. They looked at this same study. They said, okay, we notice this increase in bacteroids. We notice this increase in cluster dialis. We, we see this, we see this increase in the bacteria that is clearly associated with breaking it down, but maybe that's associated with the enzymes. So let's go ahead and add the enzymes directly in and see what happens. Okay, they add those enzymes in and the new 5GC, once again, is broken down and excreted. So then they took a look at tribes in Tanzania. Now in Tanzania, these specific tribes will only be eating meat in the dry season. So they took a look at their guts in the dry season versus not the dry season. Guess what? In the dry season, they had an abundance of the Cluster Dialis. They had more of the enzymes to break down the 5GC, the new 5GC. And then in the other seasons, it went down. So it was an adaptation that occurred to deal with it. So we don't inside molecularly at the plasma level deal with this new 5GC, but our gut does. And that's not saying that red meat is good or bad. It's saying that our bodies need to be exposed to little things here and there. And honestly, this goes for phytic acid and phytates and, and, and oxalates too, like a little bit of raw spinach or a little bit of this, like a little bit gives your body the ability to deal with it. Not saying you should eat a bunch of it, just like I'm not saying you should go out and eat copious amounts of red meat until you're sick. You shouldn't eat copious amounts of raw almonds and oxalate rich spinach until you're sick. But little bits do actually allow us to develop the microbial benefit and diversity that we need to deal with it. So I don't think this new 5GC is bad. However, I'm just a guy on the internet, so who cares? I'll see you tomorrow.